What's up YouTube, Oliver here. Today we're going to be taking a look at PDF Expert. PDF Expert is a PDF editor for Mac and iOS. And today I've been uh, given a license for the Mac version to be able to bring this review to you. Um, basically the Mac version is $54.99 currently on the Mac App Store or you can purchase it directly from the Reddle website. And that one license does allow you to use it on up to three Macs. You can also get the student discount if you're a student or if you're affiliated with an educational institution. And that gives you around about a 50% discount if you have an official educational email address. It's currently the editor's choice on the Mac App Store. And in the past it has received um, design awards and also been the top paid app. It includes powerful features to edit and annotate PDFs as well as managed pages. You can also, as well as working with existing PDFs, you can create new PDFs. Um, so you can start from a completely scratch blank document and um, you can create new PDFs, add text, shapes and so on. It is a very nicely designed uh, PDF application. It does work really well on the Mac. Um, and it, it is really quick. When you open it up, it will open up straight away. It's, it's there and it works really efficiently, even with large PDF files. Um, so let's take a look at the software itself. Okay, so this is the um, window that you're presented with when you first open up PDF Expert. It is a very nice design. It's very clean and very simple, which is something that I do like. Um, it has won awards for this design. Um, so let's just have a quick look at a document firstly. So this is a, the new tab interface which opens. There's some how-to guides up here because some of the main features about editing, reading, annotate, merge files, sign and fill forms. You can also um, select a file from the file system on your Mac or you can just drop a file there to open it and your recent documents will appear here. So let's just have a look at this. This is an iMac Pro um, quick start guide which I've downloaded from the Apple support site. It's just a sample booklet that comes with the iMac Pro but it was just an example PDF file. Okay so let's just have a look at all of the uh, options on the window. So let's just start up here. So firstly there's a toggle for the, um, the sidebar so we can turn the sidebar on and off and what appears here We'll start from the left as you've got your bookmarks which you can click any of these um, little bookmark symbols if you want to bookmark a certain page. You have outline which we'll have a look at a bit later on but if you basically if you highlight um, say I want to put this paragraph here into my outline section you can right click on it add outline item and then it just appears there and that just means you know if you click on that it takes you straight to the relevant point in the document and um, we can also delete the outline item like so annotations appear here and obviously your thumbnail view where you can flick through the whole document and just have a look at all the pages at a glance the next option we have shows all the pages and I do like this view particularly because it does allow you to manage your pages so you can just simply um, click and drag if you want to rearrange the order of pages you can also add pages, you can append a file, so if you want to merge sort of two PDFs together into one, that would allow you to do that. Uh, you can copy and paste pages, rotate them, delete. You can also select uh, however many pages you want. You can then choose to share, and you can share the pages on in those options, and you can also click Extract, and it will give you the option to save that particular page uh, on its own to a PDF file. Um, the next option along is your view options. So firstly on the left hand side you've got page layout and that gives you two options. So you can choose to have a single page view where you can just scroll through the document like that and you can also choose to have a double page view which is just looking at it like a booklet and you can even use this little checkbox and that will show the first page on its own. You also have split view options so you can view one document at a time and you can also split it. So you can choose to have them left and right or top and bottom. That's a vertical split view and horizontal split view. And basically what happens is um, if you come over here, you can adjust the size. We'll just use the same document. You might want to open up one page in one side of the document and one in the other. OK, so switching back to the single page view again, um, we'll now move to the next option. So you've got your zoom tools here. So you can click on this drop down. You can fit page, fit width, and you can also choose a specific value. Uh, I'm not sure, I think custom zoom, you can just click in there and just type a certain value, say I wanted it to be at 80% and it will zoom to 80%. And if we go back to fit page then it will fill 
the width of the window. And you've also got your plus and minus, which you can use to manually um, increase or decrease the zoom. Um, we'll have a look at annotate and edit just in a moment, but you've also got the option here to go back to page one, and that will mean if you're somewhere further down the document, um, say I'm selected at page four here and I want to go back to page one, it'll take me back to the first page certainly the the sort of selection of the first page and the next option along is the share icon you can choose to send it by email you can either document or flatten you can send it as a message obviously airdrop notes reminders and so on whatever you know apps you have installed on your mac and whatever services they offer could potentially appear there and you've also got the search fields so let's just type imac as an example so um, basically it just shows you and it is a very quick search I must admit it does come up almost instantly this is only a fairly small document however I'm not sure what it would be like with a large PDF document um, but it shows every instance and you can click and it'll highlight them in the document of the particular word that you search for so let's just click done okay so let's look at the two main options um, here now we've got annotate and edit so to start with annotate um, what we will do is we'll have a look at these options so the first thing you've got here is highlight Basically, this gives you a sidebar, and with all these sidebars, you, if you click on the little icon at the top, you can expand it to be a full size, and it gives you the, all the details. And you can also expand it so it's just um, like a minimized sort of small sidebar at the side, which is nice if you're trying to browse a document so it doesn't take up too much space. And you can basically choose a highlight color from one of the four preset colors, and you can also click on the color wheel and use all the standard Apple color settings to you know choose a color that you want to use as a highlight. And basically you just choose the color you want and you just click over the text to highlight it as so and if you want to actually remove a highlight while you've got the highlight tool enabled you'll notice if you move the cursor over some text which is already highlighted it changes to an arrow and if you click on it it just highlights that and just press the backspace key and it's so it's very easy to actually um, remove your highlights and of course if we go back to annotations in the sidebar here you can see that anything that you've highlighted will also appear at the side and um, the next options underline and strike through very similar to highlight basically you can just choose colors um, and sort of with underline you get this additional option for style very similar thing you just highlight text and it will underline it and so on and again it appears at the side the next ones along here you've got a pen tool this just lets you freeform sketch you can choose what um, width you want the line to be if you want to make it narrower you can also choose the opacity and your colors you can choose in those options and then your eraser basically just gets rid of um, any drawings it won't get rid of any text in the PDF and it won't get rid of highlights, underlines, and so on. It just gets rid of any drawings with the pen tool. You've got the text tool, so you can just click anywhere, and that will create a text box. You can drag it to make it bigger if you wanted to. And you get all the text options down here, so obviously you choose your fonts, weights, sizes, colors, and so on. Um, and basically you can just type anything you want. The next tool along is the shape tool. You have a square. You can also use an ellipse, arrow, uh, sorry line then arrow um, so you can basically just select the shape you want and draw it like so you also have options down here for the stroke width and the opacity and also just the stroke color and the fill color down there the next options we have are notes say i want to just uh, add a note to this section here you can simply just click and type anything you want and basically that note will appear at the side okay so the next option along we have is the stamp tool and what this basically lets you do is you can choose from a selection of different stamps. Um, you can also choose custom, where you can add a you can add a stamp. You can put your text in, date, time, and so on, which basically would just replace the stamp with date, time. You can also import your own image if you have a custom stamp. But basically, what happens is you could choose something like final or approved. And if you just click on the document, it appears there. You can use these handles to resize it and so on. And it just basically means you can put certain information easily on the document. Next tool is signatures. So sometimes if you sign in, for example, a PDF contract or a form that might need a signature, this is a useful tool for that. So if we click add signature, the three options we get is keyboard. And you can obviously just literally type anything you want there and choose a color. Mouse, which means you can just sketch something with your mouse. And also image where you can import an image. 
Um, now, one thing I've noticed is that in preview, you do get the option to, um, when you use a signature by an image, it just basically tells you to draw um, on a piece of plain white paper your signature and hold it up to the camera. And I think it does some sort of, it'll basically sort of digitally scan in your signature and analyze it and so, so it sort of gives you an optimized image. Whereas in um, PDF Expert, I don't believe it does that. It will just literally use the image that you um, insert there as your signature. And then basically you would add your signature in, you can just um, drop it anywhere you want in the document. And the next thing is the selection tool. All this basically does is let you select. So say I want to highlight this paragraph and copy it, I can just select it like so. And you can choose to crop, so if it was a PDF document and you want to crop it to that size, you can crop. You can also right click and copy the text if you want to copy uh, and so on. You'll notice that it does show that um, kind of selection on all pages and that's just because um, if you were to crop the document you may wish to choose that you can crop the PDF just to that size and it would change it so that every page was cropped to the same size um, but that's basically how that tool works so let's look at the next section now which is edit edit basically allows you to um, edit the text um, and add other things to the PDF. So firstly, the PDF itself, because this isn't a particularly rights protected PDF, so it does let me edit the text. Uh, depending on the PDF file that you're using, it may not always be possible to do this, but providing that the PDF that you have allows you to edit text, you can simply double click in any text element or image anywhere on the document it recognizes, and it will allow you to edit the text. So let's just look at this paragraph here. I double click on the paragraph, it immediately opens up and allows me to make changes. Now one thing you might notice is when I've gone into the edit mode, it has actually changed the line spacing of the paragraph. Not quite sure why it does that, but when you do open paragraphs, depending on how they're styled, sometimes it will lose some of the styling of the paragraph. Um, but one thing you'll notice is that it does let me edit it um, using the same font that's embedded in the PDF. If I click on this um, text tool here, it's actually using San Francisco um, Pro Text Lite, which is Apple's own font, and bearing in mind that particular font would only be available within the PDF, it, you, even if you don't have these fonts installed on your computer, because of the way PDFs work, you can embed fonts within PDFs, um, but it's very clever because even though that font's embedded in the PDF, I can still type something, and it's basically using the same font as the, the rest of the document. You can also click on the text tool and a bit like before you can simply just draw a text box there to add your own text. Um, and if, This is quite useful if you're filling out a PDF form for example. You can simply just, if it's not an interactive form, you can just drop text boxes over the top of the form fields and type in whatever you want. Image basically lets you draw out a frame and then you can select, you know, if you want to insert an image there. You can select where you want the image from and then it would basically just appear in the frame. Link, again, say I wanted to link this text that says iMac Pro. If I draw a box around it'll turn green and what that basically means is it's created like a hotspot on that particular section and if I choose to link it I can either choose to a web address or to a page within the PDF so you can even click on the target button and you can select the destination area. So say I wanted to go down to here where it says next setup assistant and it basically will take you straight to that page. If I come out of the link tool and I click on that area, that's where it would take you to. Now I have to come out of edit to show you this. But if I come out of edit, you notice the hotspot disappears, but the cursor becomes a hyperlink. And if I click on that, it takes me straight to where I had set it to. So that is a very useful feature. We'll come over to the final tool in edit, which is redact. This is a really powerful tool. What it allows you to do is it allows you to black out certain text. So for example, you might want to release a PDF, but there might be confidential information in there, like an address or a telephone number or something that you want to hide before you share that with someone. It's really easy to do this and there's uh, several options. So the first option here allows you to black out text. And all that means is if you highlight anything, it basically just puts a black box over it. The second option is to delete text and all that means is if you highlight any text there it will simply delete it or put like a white box if you like over it so you can't see it. Then we also have search and redact which is a very powerful tool. I'm going to go to the blackout option again because whichever tool you have selected here when you go to search and redact that's the tool it will use. And basically what happens is 
a bit like when we went over to the search function before, we can search for anything within the document. So say I wanted to redact any text which says iMac. I simply type the word iMac. Firstly, it brings up a search results which shows me every instance of the word iMac. And I can either choose to click on a certain one, for example, it highlights it down here and redact that particular instance. And then it moves to the next instance, but as you can see, it's redacted the word iMac. It also allows me to just click all, and with one click of the mouse, I've redacted every instance of the word iMac throughout the whole document. If you've noticed that it hasn't done it on the front page, it's because it's a, embedded as an image, it's not actually text. So just to go over a few other options that we'll have up here in the menu that we haven't otherwise covered. So in the file options, you've got the option to create a new PDF, or you can use the command and N shortcut. And what that'll do is it will basically, we've got a new tab, open up a blank document. You can obviously make a new from clipboard, you can um, new tag open, you can merge two files together. A lot of these are self-explanatory. One of the uh, main features of PDF Expert is you can also reduce the size of a PDF. So if you're going to share this on your website or send it by email, you might not want a huge file. It does allow you to sort of flatten and reduce the file size. You can export the summary of annotations as HTML, text markdown and so on. Create passwords show the document, again, share it, print it, and you can also go to properties and it'll allow you to change things like title, author, subject, keywords, and so on. Basically, edit, pretty self-explanatory, but you can also remove all annotations, and if there was a form, you can uh, clear the form. So if we do that, you, it'll delete all the annotations and it can't be undone, but it'll not delete things like redactions because that's classed as an edit. Um, and there isn't a way to clear all redactions, you'd have to manually remove them as far as I'm aware. That's one of the only downsides about the software is that if you've made changes to a PDF, you'd have to undo them because it sort of automatically saves. View basically the same things we've already looked at, annotate, um, basically all the tools, but it's just in the menu and edit and so on and go, window and help. Um, one thing worth pointing out in views is also an option for theme. You get different options, so the day is the standard theme, the one that I prefer the most. You've also got the option for sepia, and it doesn't actually change so much the theme of the application window, it just changes the theme of the document. As you can see, it's changed the background colour, and you also have the option to make it night if you wanted to make it black or white. I'm not quite sure why you'd want to use those, if I'm perfectly honest with you. Personally, I always prefer the day, which is just a standard theme. And just to quickly show you, in case you're interested, if we go to the preferences here, you don't get very many settings. You can just do things like changing your default um, PDF reader through there, your author name, and there's a couple of advanced settings. There's not a lot of settings you can actually change here, though. A lot of what you see is what you get. It is a very useful PDF editor, and I must say I do like it a lot. Okay, well, I hope to help you to make an informed decision. As you've seen from the software, PDF Expert does include lots of very useful features. I also find that it's very reliable because I have found, especially with the dual display setup, that in High Sierra, preview seems to be very buggy and it isn't great with large PDF files. So this really is a must-have application uh, and it is at a very affordable price if you work with PDFs a lot, especially large PDF files. As always, all the links will be in the video description. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, if you have any questions, please do leave a comment. If you like the video, please thumbs it up and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this coming your way very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.